What's going on? This is Big Chief from G Riders and welcome to another episode of Testing Rides. Today, I'm going to test it out the 2020 Ford Explorer Limited. Welcome to the 2020 Explorer. All new for the sixth generation, this new Explorer is new and improved and ready to compete with the rest of the family crossovers in size. And it comes back with the with some fresh new technology, a new engine option, and a brand with the brand with the brand new platform. The big news for the 2024 Explorer, it is now a rear-wheel drive-based platform, which is really nice. And also this platform is now shared with the other with the Lincoln Aviator, which came back um, for this generation with the Explorer as well. So that means if you get a two-wheel drive for Explorer now, you are now getting a rear-wheel drive Explorer just like this particular one here. So I think that's really that's pretty awesome. And it, you know it just it feels a lot different than the Explorer that I replaced, but we'll talk about talk more about that on the driving portion. This is the 2024 Explorer, and all 2024 Explorers come standard with the 2.3 liter inline turbocharged four-cylinder, it's the EcoBoost 2.3, making 300 horsepower and 310 foot-pounds of torque. Since this is a family crossover, this vehicle does weigh about just over 4,300 pounds, which is kind of cool because it's 100 pounds down from last year, which is pretty awesome. But even though it weighs 4,200 pounds, it gets a pretty reasonable 21 in the city and 28 on the highway. If this were all-wheel drive, this one would lose one mile per gallon in each area, so it'd be 20 city and 27 highway. But even those numbers are not too bad. I think that's significantly better than what the last Explorer got. But the fifth generation Ford Explorer with the v with the base engine option got about 16 to 17 city and about 22 23 highway, which this one is a big improvement. And this one comes with the 10 speed automatic to help that out just a little bit more. So this is the 2020 Ford Explorer Limited. But the, but the base Ford Explorer starts out at about $33,000. You get like the, the, the co-pilot assist and everything like that, just like the basic stuff for the Ford Explorer cloth seats and all that. But this is a limited, so this is considered the mid-range model because it has the ST, which is more of the performance version, and then it has the Platinum, which is more of the luxurious version. And this one is, sits right in the middle. This one starts at about $48,000, but this one has two options on it. So this one has the polished 20-inch wheels, like this one has on it. It also has the dual pane panoramic sunroof, which are two, which two out of like I feel like the, the these these polished wheels aren't really worth in my opinion. They look okay, but they're not like great. But I think the sunroof is definitely worth it. I think you shouldn't buy one of these without the sunroof. And with those two options on it, this car comes in just over fifty thousand dollars. And I feel like fifty thousand dollars is about average for a car with this much equipment on it because this is a limited. This also has the pilot. The, the pilot, the Ford Copilot 360 Plus, which has the um, stop and go traffic capabilities and also can steer, can steer for you. As long as you keep your hand on the wheel, it goes around curves and all that cool stuff. It also comes with a tow speaker, VNL sound system, and heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, and a lot of other really awesome features like that. But with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look around the 2024 Explorer and see what it's like. Just just like exterior and, and interior. Welcome to the exterior walk around of the 2024 Explorer. Let's go ahead and take a start with the start in the front of the new Explorer, and kind of see what it's like. So starting here in the front of the Explorer, so the, this, the, the 2024 Explorer is an all new generation of Explorer. So they have continued to work on their design language. And I definitely think that this one looks um, pretty good from the previous model. It takes what was good about both designs of the fifth generation between the squareness, the boxiness of the of the facelift 2016 and above, and then that kind of the more round the roundness from the 26 the, the 2011 to 2015 model. And I think this one definitely looks pretty good. I think they definitely did a great job on the styling here. So I kind of like how the the grill is integrated kind of to the headlights here. Too much cone for me, but you know you always can just black that out. Um, I like the design of the fog lights and the positioning and everything. And then you got your night then you got your nice front facing camera down there, and then you got your sensors at the bottom for the co-pilot assist system. So taking a look around the side of the 2020 Ford Explorer. One thing, one first thing to notice with the new Explorer is 
if you had the previous one, you'll notice that this Explorer is a lot longer and lower than the previous model. And I think that has to do with the new platform that this one is on. And I just feel like they took the two Ford family SUVs together, the, which was the Explorer and the Flex, and they made it to one vehicle now because they got rid of the Flex for the 2020 model year. But I think that this new Explorer with a little bit longer, with a little bit longer body, and I believe the, the wheelbase is, is a little bit longer than it was before too. I'll put it up here. I think it looks a lot better. I like a, I, I love a longer wheelbase SUV like of this size. I think that looks pretty good. Coming around the back, it kind of has the same. It looks the same as any Ford Explorer has for a, for a long time. But weird thing that always that everybody talks about with these Ford Explorers is the fact that these exhaust pipes down here are fake. They actually route underneath, which is weird. So I, I understand. I don't understand why they even did that. Like they should have just routed it down instead of putting these fake ones on before. But I don't know how to feel about it to be honest. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and just open up the back since we're already back here. So this has the, you know, famous tailgate. Put your foot under the bumper. Famous tailgate, so. Kick your foot under the bumper. And the new Explorer has a lot of space. So I'll put up the official numbers with the rear seats up here. Boom. And I'll put up the, the numbers with the rear seats all the way down. So, if we look here, we got nice storage area. We got the, the, the buttons for the for the third row, like the for exhibition has. You press the button, and they both restore. You push this button again, and they both go down, which is pretty awesome. You got your subwoofer for the for the sound system there. But I don't see any USB ports back here in the third row. And honestly, a lot of the other crossovers this size, they have third they have USB ports back here. So that's pretty interesting. Alright, let's go ahead and close it. Alright. It relocks the vehicle back when and you saw, as you saw the mirrors just folded back in there. So overall, I think the exterior of the new Explorer looks pretty awesome. I think um, they did a pretty good job with it. They did a pretty good job with the design. I think they combined, they did a good combination of both vehicles that they used to have in their lineup. And I think that, you know, um, <laughs> I'm already starting to, see, I'm already seeing these like everywhere. Like I, this car has been out for about close to a year now, but you know, I'm seeing these everywhere and I, I understand it because the exterior, just, just from that, it looks pretty awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interior now. Welcome to the interior of the 2020 Ford Explorer. And just hopping in here, the first thing I noticed is how much different this interior is than the model it replaced. So let's go ahead and start over here. One thing I do, I've noticed that I like is the door panels and the dashboard is a lot slimmer than it was before. Like I definitely used to think that the door panels and, and the dashboard was a little bit too chunky in the last Explorer, but they kind of cut it down a lot just, and it gives a little bit more space in the interior. So where you rest your, rest your arm here is nice and softly padded. I like kind of where just the basic buttons are, um, for the unlock and unlock and memory seat. And, and I just like this all just works a little bit better. Ford ha is working with the new, um, light, light switch over there which is which you know it's just a light switch i'm not really there's nothing really to critique about that it just works um it's definitely good to see a new one finally you got your kind of the new style ford steering wheel with your pro pilot assist if um features over here with this with the steering and the adaptive cruise control you got your sound you got your volume you got your tuning you got your menu and then you got a nice little helper screen in, in the middle there and it does a cool graphic when you open the doors. When you get in and out, it's pretty cool. And then it says explore in the middle. I think that's pretty dope. But I believe you can get a full digital, just get a full digital instrument cluster in this car. And I think that, you know, even if you're not getting it, I think this one's pretty fine as well. So coming over here to the middle, um, the 
One thing that I roasted the last Fork Explorer about is having too many buttons and they will cut this way down from the previous model. You have two knobs for your volume and your, and, and your tuning. You got your seeking buttons there. You got your parking sensor off. You got your flasher. You got your, your 360 camera system on the car. Basics here, you just have your heated cool seats and heated steering wheel. You got your climate control buttons, which you need all those buttons. Then you got your heat and cool seats for the... And you got your heat and cool seat for the passenger, for the front passenger. This is way better laid out. Like, I, you can actually use this while you drive instead of having to look for buttons. I think that's pretty cool. So this one has the 8-inch screen, um, which looks a little bit too small for this interior, actually. I feel like, um, so I know you can get, you can get like, the tablet size thing that's, like, 10 inches, like, pretty high and it goes down pretty low. But I actually do like this little slot underneath the infotainment, the Sync the sink 3 screen here, because you can just put your phone right there, which is really nice, and it stays out of the way, and it stays in place there. Um, but I would have liked to see Ford go with more of a widescreen than a um, vertical screen. I think that the widescreen is definitely the, the way to go to, in order to get the most um, screen real estate in there. Let's open it up here in the middle. So open it up here inside. You have you have your USB ports. You have a Type A and a Type C port in there, and your typical you know cigarette lighter type of situation. You got there's plenty of room in there um, for storing things if you got to do that. And also you got a nice little phone holder here. This and the. In the cup in the cup holder section here it'd be nice if they would have opened that up from the other side and just made let allowed you to run your car through there so you could just sit your phone right there but you know you know they, you can't do everything all right you got your typical forward rotary dial for the shifter now electronic parking brake auto hold auto start stop this is actually a traction control off button which is really nice because before you had to dig through fords um man used to get the, to the traction control um, and then you got your drive modes, and this one doesn't have the little knob because this one is a real wheel drive model, as I mentioned before. All right, coming across the dash, I like this kind of like little shelf, this little two tier type of situation. I think that looks pretty awesome. And then I think the basics are just the. I think the basics, just the way the interior is laid out, looks really nice. So the seats in the new Explorer are really nice. They're actually they feel like same old same old Ford seats. They're pretty comfortable. Has knife support. They look nice. They feel nice. They're just seats, to be honest. So I'm not really gonna talk too much about that. But, you know, as you can see, as you guys know, I'm a big dude over 350 pounds and over six feet tall. And, you know, this interior is really comfortable. Like, you know, it maintains the same comfortable driving position that I that you had in the previous Explorers. And this one just, you know, it's just even better just cause it's the more, it's the newer one, but this one feels a little bit more manageable in terms of the size because it's not as wide as the one, bef the one that I replaced in terms of its actual like door panels and everything like that. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, the only thing about it for me with this interior is you do for, you know, $50,000, you do see some cheap plastics around, like, right, like kind of around the dash, you still see, you still can find cheap plastics in here. And I just think that like, like that, I think they could have done a better job with that, especially at the price point this car is, but you know, it's okay. Like you, there is definitely still a model for you to go up to. Um, like, cause you can go up to the platinum model and like, of course you better not be finding anything like that in the platinum model. Oh yeah. And you got the dual pane panoramic sunroof. So let's go ahead and get in the back seat to see what that's like. All right. Welcome to the back seat of the 2020 Ford Explorer. And the back seat is actually very, very comfortable. Like it's kind of nice to have the panoramic sunroof to get the extra light here in the back, but it has plenty of, plenty of space back here. You guys know I'm like I'm, I'm a pretty tall guy and I'm very comfortable back here. I could do a long road trip. My feet fit, fit nicely underneath the seats here. Um, I also wear a size 15, so it's really nice when I can fit my fit, fit my feet underneath here. Um, seats are pretty comfortable. They slide backwards and forwards. They also recline like so. Has like a little privacy screen, which is nice. You know, when you got little, 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 when you got like really little ones back here, you got your, you know, your classic 2005 Ford passenger van, <laughs> air vents back here, which is fine. Um, you got a nice light. You also have heated seats in the rear, which is nice. You also have 
a, you have also have a Type A and a Type C USB port in the back, and also you have a 110 watt three prong like house plug, so you can plug in a coffee maker or a laptop or a whatever you want to plug in back here. So that's pretty cool. Also, you got this nice little this little handy dandy like little um, tray. As you, I have a water bottle here. Um, it doesn't fit, but this could fit any other basic drink that you would need to put back here. Um, also, you have a cup holder in the doorway, which is really nice. You know, for the most part, the back the back seat of this Explorer is really nice. Um, I think that they did a great job, like giving the backseat passengers a lot of different options and amenities here. Um, and then, as I talked about talked about before, the third one really doesn't have too much. The third one really doesn't have too much back there, and I think that they should have, you know, did a little bit more with the third row in terms of giving the feature, because most cars in this class nowadays have USB ports in the third row, and and there's no USB ports. Wait, let's see. Yeah, there's no USB ports in the third row at all. There's a cup holder, but there's no USB port, so I think that's a little bit uh, ridiculous. So come on forward. All right. With that being, with that all being said, um, let's go ahead and take it out on the road and drive it because I don't need to go. I'm not going to go through the sync system or anything like that because you know it's the same sync system that's in all the new Ford products, and I've reviewed enough Ford products recently. Um, so like I'll go to I'll find a video that I did I went in depth with the sync system and I'll put a link down below. But let's go ahead and head out on the road. Welcome to the driver dri driving portion of the 2020 Ford Explorer. So we hop out of the road in this thing and you go ahead and mash the throttle. One thing that I one thing that you'll notice is, you know, yes, this is a big SUV to have a four cylinder, but it actually is pretty decently quick. Like, you know, you definitely won't struggle for power. So, you know, how is this new Explorer to drive? Honestly, this new Explorer is so much better than the outgoing model. Like, so and it's, it's, it feels so different. So with this car going to a with with this vehicle going to a rear wheel drive platform, it actually has driving dynamics. I'll I'll. I'll demonstrate later on in the video when we get to a curvy part of the road um, of like how much better it drives and I'll just I'll talk about it a little bit more. But let's just talk about some basics. So first of all, you see the view out of the, wind, out of the windows is really nice. Like it's pretty commanding. You sit high up. Not too many blind spots. It's really nice. Um, I do kind of like, I didn't like, the, I don't really like the position of the screen because it's kind of too low. I wish it would be more facing towards me. It's like dead in the center of the um dead in the center of the car and i wish it was more kind of facing me but that's just a small complaint of mine about the ergonomics of the interior um the ride is really comfortable uh the ride is really comfortable it's it's a lot stiffer than the outgoing explorer because this explorer is um i feel like they try to make this explorer for trying to make this explorer a little bit sportier than the outgoing model because i mean some of the driving dynamics reminds me of like driving like a dodge durango and you know, this is the old, that's the only other rear wheel drive platform um, crossover this size is the Dodge Durango. So I think that's a pretty pretty good compliment that they've you know managed to have the Explore handle like that. All right, so a couple complaints before we like get to the fun part of the road. The transmission in here, so the 10 speed transmission is a good transmission, but my personal opinion, I don't think it likes the four cylinder. So. Every time I'm accelerating or decelerating or re reversing or something like that, and I was in two different Explorers, and it's a bit clunky to be honest with you. So it'll be you'll step on the gas, you let off, and it'll clunk into the like to eighth or ninth gear, and I think that's a little bit annoying. I think that this engine is better suited for something like the eighth speed automatic that's used in like the Edge and things like that, and not the ten speed. I think I don't for some reason the ten speed just doesn't like the four cylinder. Um, and I experienced the same exact thing when I drove the 2020, uh, no, when I drove the 2018 Ford Mustang with the EcoBoost. I just think that Ford needs to work on the transmission tuning a little bit more, in my opinion. See, it just lurched right there. If you notice, I went like, oh, yeah, that was a lurch. So I think that they need to work on that transmission tuning a little bit better. Um, second thing is I think that, like I said, the the infotainment, the infotainment center um, ergonomics isn't great, to be honest with you. And I think they should do a little bit better. 
Oh, better get, I gotta get up to speed. But I think they need to work on that a little bit better. I think, you know, this is the new model, so I think they should have thought about that before just releasing it, in my opinion. But, you know, again, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but, I realized in the, in, in, the, in the tour portion, I didn't talk about the infotainment. The infotainment system is Sync 3. It just works. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It just works, it just works like it should. Um, the 12 speaker BNO sound system is very good. It bumps, has nice, it, nice clarity, nice bass. It's pretty good. Um, you know, for $50,000, it this def, definitely feels like a $50,000 Ford. Like, it's not like the best quality ever, but it's pretty nice for what it is. And you know, that's kind of what this vehicle is about. This is like a family vehicle. So I would assume that every for every material to be the best, to be would be the best material ever, which is, you know, obviously fine. I love the panoramic sunroof and I think that you know it just adds to, so much to the interior of this car so it looks like I chose so it looks like you know for but the thing about the thing about it though for this Explorer this this Explorer actually handles well now so the previous Explorer was on a car platform which is like the four was a Ford Taurus and the dates all the way back to like 2005 2006 and the last explorer was on that platform so the last explorer didn't handle that well it handled kind of like a big a big a big floaty tourist wagon but now that it's on a new rear wheel drive platform this car this vehicle actually handles very very nicely it rotates nicely around corners it has crossover steering feel but the suspension the suspension and the platform makes you want to drive it makes you want to go pretty pretty hard pretty fast in this vehicle um i didn't go down the other road um that i was going to go down to to to, to you know demonstrate the handling but honestly i just think that this ford explorer is probably one is probably high on like high on the list for the best better handling um, crossovers of this size and especially this rear-wheel drive model um, this rear-wheel drive model makes it drive so much differently than it before instead of pulling what is it instead of what is it instead of pushing it pulls which is really nice um, and it makes the handling a little bit pretty nice pretty nice for a crossover like I took some corners pretty quickly in this thing and it handled it like a champ so I would assume if you get the rear wheel drive model and don't really care about the ground clearance, it'd be kind of cool to, to lower it and put some stickier tires on it because this thing would be an absolutely, absolute beast. And I have to look, I'll check and I'll put a lower thirds in the bottom to see if you can get a um, rear wheel drive in the ST because that'd be pretty, that'd be pretty dope. But honestly, I'm not gonna make this video too long. I really enjoyed the, the, my time with the, with the 2024 Explorer. It is much improved over the previous model. And of, and of course, like any car, it is not perfect. There are some things that can be improved on. I think Ford needs to go back to the drawing board with the tune on this transmission. Um, and I think they should update the ergonomics when they do a facelift of this vehicle. Maybe like tilt it or do something like that. But for the most part, this is a great SUV and I understand why I see so many of them on the road. It's just a good SUV, nothing more, nothing less. So if you're looking for a comfortable, pretty good looking, very good handling um, and decent fuel economy SUV, definitely temp definitely take a look at the 2020 Ford Explorer, whether you're looking at the base model or you're looking at a Platinum, take a look at Explorer. So if you like this video, hit me with a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, keep riding me, thanks for watching.